So this is one of the most popular white sneakers out there at the moment, the Adidas Samba. There's no doubt about it, it's a great shoe, but there's plenty of other great shoes out there that are just as good, if not better than the Samba, that don't get the love they deserve. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the best underrated white sneakers out there at the moment. They're all timeless, they're easy to style, and they're perfect for the summer. If you enjoy this one at any point, please feel free to drop it a like. And now that's all out the way, let's get into the sneakers. So first up, we've got the Puma Vlado stencils, but to be honest, all Puma sneakers, well, most of them are underrated in my opinion. But the Puma Vlado is a retro style sneaker and it was originally designed for handball and I think it looks great. Handball created some really nice looking sneakers back in the 70s and 80s, that's for sure. You've also got the Adidas handball speciales and the Puma handball that come to mind. Anyway, if you like the look of the Adidas Samba, then you're probably going to like the look of these as well because they both look very similar. Like the Samba, it's got that low profile, that lovely gum sole and it's a really simple design. They've got the Puma swoosh or that rainbow logo and some writing on the side and that's about it. Although they do have a few versions of the Vlado that do have a little bit more going on but the basic version they're very simple. And out of interest what do Puma call their swoosh thing? Does anyone even know? Does it even have a name? Anyway as Puma shoes aren't normally that hyped you can often find them in the sale for an absolute steal. For example the Vlado I've recently seen it in the sale for about £55 which I think is a great price for such a versatile shoe. And while we're talking about Puma, I have to mention them. They're my absolute favorites from the brand, but it's the Puma Army Trainer. I know I've talked about the shoe a lot on the channel over the years, but at least I'm consistent. And I know it looks really similar to the Vlado, but I think it's a little bit more sleek looking, but you can't go wrong with either. So the next sneaker I've got for you is the Medalist Low from the brand Autry. Now this brand aren't a hugely known brand, but they're definitely gaining a bit of traction right now. But this shoe definitely gives me Reebok Club C vibes, but they were made around the same time, so I don't think one can copied the other. Does this shoe give you Reebok Club C vibes as well or is it just me? They definitely look more premium than the Club C's but then the price tag does reflect that. But this sneaker comes in a load of different colorways, a load of different white colorways, loads of different textures and materials so you're spoilt for choice. Some of them also look like they've been dragged across hot tarmac and then through a hedge so if you want your sneakers to look like that brand new then go for it. If not then I'd probably avoid those. The shoe also comes as a mid top so if you like your higher top shoes then check that one out. The next shoe I've got is the Saucony Shadow 5000. Hopefully I'm pronouncing Saucony right. I know I definitely didn't used to, but hopefully that's right. Now I must admit, this isn't a sneaker that I would wear with my current style, but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate it. I think it's a really beautiful shoe. I love the details on it, and some of the colorways are absolutely gorgeous. And I think if you're a fan of New Balance sneakers and you like the 574, the 990 versions, or you like the Nike Air Max 90, then this is definitely a shoe that you should check out. Saucony have been knocking around forever, they're really well respected amongst sneakerheads, and they've just never got the mainstream attention they deserve. The next sneaker we've got is the Reebok LT Court. Now I've always liked Reebok sneakers ever since I was a kid, but the ones you always hear about are the Reebok Club C 85s and the Workout Plus. But if you were to blend the Reebok Club C and the Workout Plus together, then I think that creates the LT Court. But this shoe's got a really retro feel to it, it seems like I like my retro shoes, but yeah, I've never seen anyone wearing these outside before, so they're definitely underrated. My favorite colorway in these, I think they call it the chalk white and forest green colorway, but I'll link them down in the description box anyway, along with everything else that I talk about in this video. And if you want something more premium that gives off a similar look to the LT Court, then check out the Axel Arigato Dice Low. The materials are going to be a lot nicer, but then the price point does reflect that, so it's up to you. When it comes to aesthetics, I do think I prefer the look of the LT Court over the Dice Low, but I wanted to give you another option. If you love the Adidas Samba but you want something a little bit different, and I do mean a little bit different because they do look very similar, then check out the Adidas Jeans. But this is a really cool looking shoe and the chalk white colorway looks absolutely beautiful in my opinion. This sneaker, I think they're from the 70s so they are newer than the Sambas and they were originally designed to be worn with, you probably guessed it, jeans. Of course you don't have to wear these with jeans if you don't want to wear them with jeans. They'll go with pretty much anything. The next shoe I've got, and I know I've talked about it a lot on the channel, but I have to have it on this list, but it's the Onitsuka Tiger GSM. They're a really well-made shoe. They feel like a more premium shoe, but the price point I think is really fair for what you're getting. They're easy to wear and like I say with all these shoes, they go with pretty much anything. And if you're a fan of the Air Force One, but you want something a little bit more sleek, better quality and more low-key, then 
then definitely check this one out. They're also cheaper than the Air Force One at the moment, so you get more for your money in my opinion. And also worth checking out are the Mexico 66s from Onitsuka Tiger. They are having a little bit of a moment right now, but they're still underrated in my opinion. But I love both shoes, I own both shoes, and I really like the brand in general. The next shoe I want to talk about are the Common Project's Achilles Low. Now I wasn't sure if I was ever going to talk about these shoes on the channel again, but here we are. But this shoe was extremely popular about three or four years ago, but people got bored of them, including myself. But there's no denying it, they're a great shoe, and I don't think there's any other clean white minimal sneaker out there that beats them. I think the closest contender for me is probably the CQP Racket sneaker, but I think the Common Projects are that little bit nicer. Now I know Rose Anvil sawed one of these in half and exposed that they weren't as premium as we all once thought, but regardless, they've always held up really well for me. And actually, they've lasted longer than any other sneaker that I've ever owned, so I think that's a pretty good thing. Anyway, I've had a long break from the shoe, and that long break has brought back my love for them. I've been wearing my white Achilles Low a lot again recently, and I just think they go with everything, and I love the way they look. I've actually been loving them so much that I also bought myself a pair of the light grey Achilles Low, and I can't wait to get them, and I can't wait to wear them. But yeah, not many people are wearing them these days, and not many people are talking positively about them these days, so I do think they're currently very underrated. The next shoe is the Vans Authentic. Now hear me out on this one, I know a lot of you are probably screaming at the computer, calling me all sorts of names, saying the Vans Authentic is not underrated, and I'd agree with you for the most part. Now Vans as a brand, they're really popular, and they've got some of the most well-known shoes out there. About four or five years ago, absolutely everyone was wearing a pair of old schools. The Skate Highs, they've also had their time, but the Authentics, I think they've always been a little bit quieter. More in the background, just plodding along, doing their own thing, they remind me of myself a little bit. And they are and always have been my favourite model of Vans. They're a blank canvas and I think they're so easy to work with. You can dress them up, you can dress them down. They're timeless, they're inexpensive, and you can wear them whatever your age, whatever style you're into. And I think out of all the Vans, they're hyped up the least, but they offer the most. So that's why I think they're underrated. I'm just sat here editing this video and I don't think I explained my point as clearly as I wanted to, so I'm jumping in. So I just want to clarify, underrated doesn't mean the shoe has to be unknown or a lesser known brand. It can be a very well known shoe. It just has to mean that I think the shoe is underrated by people. So what I mean with the authentic is a lot of people look at it as a boring shoe, it's really dull, maybe even a bit childish, and I think a lot of the fashion community look at it that way. But for me, I think because it is so dull, it is so simple, that's what makes it so great, and people don't really look at it like that. It's such a plain shoe that people can make it look so different depending on what they pair with it, so that's kind of what I mean. I think they're one of the best sneakers out there, and I don't think they get the credit they deserve, and that's why I think they're underrated. But just in case you're disappointed by the Vans Authentic, then I'll throw in an extra underrated shoe. The filling pieces, a spin. So yeah, let's get back to the video. The next shoe is the high-tech squash shoe, and before you click off, let me explain. Now, I don't know if any of you remember this shoe, but when I was really tiny, a lot of the dads were wearing this shoe, especially if they played squash. But yeah, I've always weirdly kind of liked these shoes for some reason. Some photos they look horrible in, but when you see them live, they actually look pretty nice, I think anyway. But what I do want to say is I'm going to predict that these shoes will have a bit of a moment in the future. I know it might be a little bit of a weird prediction, but I've just got a feeling. And if it does happen, then you heard it here first. So let me know which sneaker you like the best and let me know if I missed one off the list. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave it a like. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching everyone. See you later.